Hi, good morning. Welcome to the Salvation Army Hope Church and Community Services Sunday morning message. My name is James Dark. I'm the Community and Family Services Coordinator and Youth Director for the Salvation Army Hope Community Church located in Ajax, Ontario. And wherever you're joining us from today and whenever it is that you're watching this, we're glad that you're here. And I'm happy that you allowed me into your homes for the next uh, few minutes or so. Now, if you recall, the last time that I spoke, and if you had been following these messages, I spoke right near the beginning of July, and at that point, I had to mention about um, my hair, as I was waiting months on end for a haircut. Well, I was happy to announce that shortly after the video aired, I was able to go get a haircut, and even though it's still looking a little crazy now, I'm in need for another one, um, I'm much happier with uh, with where it is now. So I had to get that out of the way before we started. Um, yes, I was able to get a haircut and uh, very, very thankful. Not as much as my wife was thankful for that haircut. Um, but yes, it was uh, one of the, you know, the little victories to say, to finally be able to sit in a barber's chair. Uh, our pastors, Jason and Tammy Sabrin, they're on holidays for the next week. So uh, we wish them well and rest uh, as they gear up to get ready for the fall and uh, winter seasons that are ahead of us. And I hope you too have had a great summer so far. It's uh, It's been a different one to say the least, but uh, with the next few weeks leading into Labor Day weekend, which is the unofficial end of the summer vacation, I do hope you are finding some time to enjoy even in this ridiculous heat that we're experiencing right now here in Ontario, I do hope you're finding time to enjoy it uh, with friends or family safely, of course. So for today's message, I wanted to go back a couple years to actually a family trip that uh, that we went on. My my wife and my three boys, uh, we loaded up the, the, the truck and we took a trip down to Disney World. Now, anyone from Ontario and maybe East, maybe possibly parts of Manitoba East, uh, we always would most more times than not drive down to the Florida location of Disney, Disney World. And from what I understand, the western part of our country here in Canada, you guys would partake in the Disneyland in California. But seeing as we were in Ontario, we drove down to Disney World. And of course, we uh, made, a, made a full vacation of it, stayed right there on the resort. We um, enjoyed all the rides and all the entertainment that uh, that Disney had to had to offer. Um, we even had breakfast with characters while we were there. Um, one morning we had breakfast with the Winnie the Pooh characters, and that was where we had that very awkward moment uh, where Piglet came to our table for a picture. Just as I put a piece of bacon in my mouth, it was a bit of a, a cringe-worthy moment, but Piglet understood, and we got a picture anyways. Um, but what I like about Disney is if you ask the five of us and our family what our favorite part of the trip was, we would probably have given you five different answers. And that's what I, that's what's so great and dare I even say magical about Disney. But when our family goes to Disney, we've been a few times now, no trip is complete without two things. And this is for our family. And these are two things at the Magic Kingdom. One is the Country Bear Jamboree. And that is a highlight for all of us to sit in there and watch the Country Bear Jamboree. I remember seeing that when I was much younger um, and my kids absolutely love it. We have a great time sitting in and watching these bears put on a show for us. Mechanical bears, don't worry. And um, the singing and dancing and, uh, and having a good time. So we always enjoy that. But the second thing that is a must see for us is the ride called the Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, in Florida, when we've gone down, we've been there in the summertime before, and we've been there late spring, it's hot, it's tropical, very similar temperature with the humidity to what we're experiencing, as I mentioned here in Ontario recently. So people may just wanna go on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride because it's indoors and it's air conditioned as you're lining, lining up, but our family, we enjoy because of the fun that is involved in it. So if you've never been there before, you go through the entrance and you make your way almost it's either like a dungeon setup or it's a, a pirate ship setup as you're making your way down because Disney they like to really build the theme and build uh, you know the expectations and everything as you're in line about to get on but the best part is it's nice and cool because you are underground and you're getting a cool uh, cool air coming in and uh, a nice escape from the, from the heat outside but they got decorations all over to really put you in the mood that you're about to enter you know a pirate war per se. So at the end of this ride, you get down to the very, very front and there's a boat 
without seat belts, which I've always found very strange, but there's no seat belts on this little boat and you sit down and it embarks you on this little underground journey um, on the water. And as you're going through this underground journey, you're visiting villages where there's mechanical pirates who are enjoying mechanical beverages while getting up to mechanical shenanigans. And it's all pretty calm and fun until you start to feel the wind blow in your face a little bit. And you quickly make your way down this very small hill. And that's where everything kind of takes a turn. And you find yourself now in the middle of a pirate war. There's cannons being fired and guns are being fired. There's giant splashes of water symbolizing cannonballs hitting the water. And there's captains of the ships that are yelling instructions. And even though it is Disney and it's all fun, the message of this battle was pretty clear. And that was, in order to win, you needed to sink the ship of the other side, or at least burn the ship. And that's actually what I'm going to be speaking on today, is that term right there, burn the ships. And I promise you right now, before I go any further, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not just going to spend the whole time talking about trips to amusement parks. But this next part actually ties in very well with burn the ships. So there is a message behind this. Just stay with me on this, all right? July in 2019, the TSA Hope Youth and myself and some amazing leaders, we had the opportunity to travel to Darien Lake. And for those of you who are not aware of that, Darien Lake is an amusement park, a little bit smaller than Canada's Wonderland. Um, and it's located just across the, uh, the New York state border from Ontario and um, always a, a good time to go there. But they also host a Christian music festival every single year called Kingdom Bound. Now Kingdom Bound has been happening for over 20 years and they bring in the top Christian musicians, the top worship teams from all across the planet and they invite people from all over North America, youth groups and churches to attend this four day festival. They have a, uh, like a forest area where you set up camp and you can uh, camp out for the four nights and then you ride the roller coasters or go to the water park during the day. And then at night you take in some amazing worship and uh, Christian music, a truly amazing festival. One night when we were there, we had the opportunity to see a band called For King and Country. And now if that name sounds familiar, if you had a chance to check out the TSA Hope Youth um, stop motion animated Christmas pageant that we did this year, we used a lot of the For King and Country Christmas music for the music in that pageant. If you've never heard of them, I do encourage you to look them up and I will be posting a link to one of their songs that ties in with this message below in the comments section of this video. Um, but if you've never heard of them, the best comparison I can make to a contemporary band, and this is my comparison, is Imagine Dragons. So if uh, you're a fan of Imagine Dra Dragons, I think you'd really like King and Con For King and Country. Me personally, I fi find For King and Country better, but that's just me. All right, it's two Australian American brothers. They have a combination of like fun, upbeat tunes, as well as some more serious, powerful tunes about different things that have happened in their lives and that uh, put them on the path that they've been on. But one song really stood out to me that night. And I want you to picture this now. It's like all the lights have gone dark down on the stage. Um, the 10,000 people or so out in the audience um, really having a great time. And it was silence. And the lead, one of the singers, Luke, he's one of the brothers, he was on stage. And he started to share a story with all of us. And it was a story behind the song, Burn the Ships. So he has been interviewed on multiple news uh, sources as well and internet interviews and he's given the same message so I found exactly what he said because I didn't want to mess it up so I'm going to read exactly what he said about the story behind this song called Burn the Ships. So here's what he had to say. When my wife was pregnant with our second son Phoenix she was dealing with a lot of morning sickness. She went to the doctor and he gave her some medicine to help with the nausea. I was out on the road a decent amount during that time. I noticed her behavior changed a little bit, but she was pregnant, so that's not unusual. One particular day, I was in Austin, Texas, getting ready for a show that evening. She called me and said, I need you to come home. I can't stop taking these pills. I asked my brother who was in town to be with Courtney and make sure she was okay. I got on a plane and I came home. As the night went on, she would start shaking and having these conversations like, maybe the doctors want me to just taper off, not stop taking these right away. She was almost hallucinating. Of all the things I've experienced, 
I think that was the most difficult thing I've ever dealt with because the next day I had to take her to a mental health ward in a hospital. When they called her back, I got up to, to go back with her just like a normal doctor's appointment and they said, no, you can't come. I felt so much grief in that moment. She had outpatient therapy for every day and did amazing. We actually had some amazing memories of that time. She excelled and she was doing great, but she still felt this pull to pills. One day I went home and she said, Luke, I've got to symbolize something. I've got to flush these pills down the toilet. I'm done. I'm done with the guilt and the shame. I've got to move into a new way, a new life. And when she was flushing those pills, the analogy of burning ships came to me. Again, I posted the song Burn the Ships on the comments section below this video. You'll be able to see that when, uh, when we're done here. And you don't need me to sit here and explain the seriousness of addictions and the struggles that come with them. And Luke mentioned uh, there's a very helpless feeling from family and loved ones and they want to try to make everything better and, you know, and, and they can't. And the symbolism of Luke's wife pouring those pills and basically stating that she was burning the ships and starting a new life, it's a beautiful analogy. And at our community services office, we have met multiple individuals who have been struggling with different addictions. And we have been witness to some who have publicly announced that they are starting fresh. Basically, they've announced they are burning their ships and starting brand new. But let's look a little deeper now. Where else in our lives can this term, burn the ships, play a part? Here's some suggestions. Maybe there's something eating at you inside right now that you have been holding on to for way too long. Is it a grudge with someone that needs to be addressed? Or is it a struggle that you need to talk about? If that is the case, I encourage you to refer back to Psalm 55, 22, where it says, cast your burden onto the Lord and he shall sustain you. It's a very simple instruction. Take it to God. Maybe there's some uncertainty in your life and you're worried about what tomorrow will bring. You are worried because you're not sure how that next bill is going to be paid. You're worried because you're not sure how you're going to pay for those groceries tomorrow. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Why do we try to figure these things out on our own? As humans, we don't have the ability to understand God's plan for our lives. But as Christians, we have faith knowing that we are safe in his hands. I once not long ago had a person share with me struggles that they were having and uh, disclosed to me the toll that it was having on their mental health. And as we were speaking about it, you know, I asked them simply, have you prayed? Have you talked to God? Have you asked for guidance? I was not really laughed at, but I was kind of brushed off as they said, they, no, they hadn't tried that yet. And don't expect me to see it happen anytime soon. So my next question to them was, what do you have to lose? If you're spiraling and spiraling and spiraling and you're trying to do it all by yourself, it's obviously not working. If it's not working on your own, why not let God in the conversation? My guess for this person, they might've been scared with what they might've found out once God was in control. But we need God to play a bigger part. So I will simply ask you, if you're watching this right now and something has come to your mind, whether it's a change that you're wanting to make in your life, perhaps it's anger towards someone and you know you've held on to that for way too long and it's been bothering you for a very long time, or maybe just now you're realizing, I can't do all this by myself. I need help from God. I encourage you to remember three little words from today. Burn the ships. It's time to start fresh and step into a new day. And I encourage you that if you are struggling with anything that we have talked about, or if there's something else that I, that I haven't mentioned, but it's been triggered by this message and you want to talk to someone, please don't hesitate. Reach out to myself. 
or of course, Pastor Jason and Pastor Tammy or another member of our congregation, we'd love to have the conversation and let's have that conversation. It's time to burn the ships. It's time to start fresh. It's time to start a new day. Folks, I hope you have a wonderful week. And again, thank you for allowing me into your living rooms, family rooms, kitchens, wherever you're watching this this morning. Please stay safe. The weather stays like this. Please stay hydrated. And God bless you all. Have a fantastic week.